Welcome to Sustainer Step, your free guide to everything sustainability. I'm Karam. We're here to make the complex world of sustainability simple. And today we're focusing on a key topic, calculating scope two emissions. These are crucial in understanding your carbon footprint and making strides towards a greener future. So get ready to dive into the world of emission calculations and learn how they can help us build a sustainable world. Today, we're going to break down the process of calculating scope two emissions. Firstly, it's important to understand what scope two emissions are. Scope two emissions are the greenhouse gases that are released into the atmosphere due to the energy we consume. They differ from scope one emissions, which are the direct emissions from sources owned or controlled by an organization, like the exhaust from company cars. Scope two emissions, on the other hand, are indirect. They come from the generation of the electricity, heat or steam purchased and consumed by the organization. Imagine you're running an office building. The electricity you use for lighting, running computers, air conditioning, all of it contributes to your scope two emissions. But it's not just businesses that have these emissions, they also apply to households. The electricity that powers your refrigerator, your television, your electric kettle, that's all part of your personal scope two emissions. So why is it important to calculate scope two emissions? Well, the first step in reducing our impact on the environment is understanding it. By calculating scope two emissions, we can identify key areas where we can make changes. Maybe it's switching to a renewable energy provider or investing in energy efficient appliances. Every little helps. The impact of scope two emissions is significant. They contribute to the overall level of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere, which in turn contributes to global warming. And remember, unlike scope one emissions, which are mainly the responsibility of businesses and industry, scope two emissions are something we all contribute to in our daily lives. That means each and every one of us has a part to play in reducing them. In addition, calculating scope two emissions is also crucial for businesses in terms of regulation. Many governments require companies to report their greenhouse gas emissions, including scope two. This can have implications for a company's reputation and can even affect its bottom line. Now that we have a basic understanding of scope two emissions, we can move on to the calculation process. So let's dive into the step-by-step -step process of calculating scope two emissions. To start off, it's vital to understand what scope two emissions are. In the world of sustainability, they refer to indirect emissions that come from the generation of purchased electricity, steam, heating and cooling consumed by your organization. Essentially, they're the emissions caused by your energy providers. So, how do we calculate these? The first step is to identify your sources of scope two emissions. These are typically your utility suppliers, so you'll need to gather your energy bills or records of energy consumption. Remember, we're focusing on purchased electricity, steam, heating, and cooling. Now let's illustrate this with a simple example. Imagine you're running a small office building your scope two emissions would come from the electricity used for lighting, heating and cooling and any steam-based systems you might have. Having identified your sources, the next step is to measure your energy consumption. This is usually given in kilowatt hours, KWH, for electricity and therms or British thermal units, BTU, for steam, heating and cooling. Let's say, for instance, your office building consumes 50,000 kilowatt hours of electricity and 10,000 therms of natural gas for heating in a year. Once you have these figures, you'll need to convert them into carbon dioxide equivalent emissions, or CO2e. This is the standard unit for measuring carbon footprints. You'll need emission factors for this step, which are values that translate energy use into greenhouse gas emissions. These factors can vary depending on the region and the fuel source, so it's important to use the most accurate and up-to-date factors you can find. For our example, Let's assume that the emission factor for your electricity is 0.5 kilograms of CO2 E per kWh, and for natural gas, it's 0.05 kilograms of CO2 E per therm. To calculate your emissions, you'd multiply your energy consumption by the emission factor. So, for the electricity, it would be 50,000 kWh times 0.5, which equals 25,000 kilograms of CO2 E. For the natural gas, it would be 10,000 therms times 0.05, which equals 500 kilograms of CO2e. The next step is to add up these figures to get your total scope two emissions. In our example, that would be 25,000 plus 500, 
which equals 25,500 kilograms of CO2e for the year. Finally, it's worth noting that these calculations can become more complex if you're dealing with multiple energy sources or locations. In such cases, you'll need to repeat these steps for each source or location and add up the results. So, to recap, the process of calculating Scope 2 emissions involves identifying your energy sources, measuring your energy consumption, converting this into CO2e using emission factors, and adding up the results. Remember, these calculations are an essential part of managing your organization's carbon footprint. By understanding and reducing your Scope 2 emissions, you can make a significant contribution to sustainability and the fight against climate change. That's the process of calculating Scope 2 emissions. It might seem complex, but with some practice, you'll get the hang of it. It's easy to make mistakes when calculating Scope 2 emissions, but don't worry, we've got you covered. Now let's dive into some common pitfalls that people often encounter when trying to calculate their Scope 2 emissions. The first common mistake is underestimating the importance of accurate data. Without accurate data, the calculations can be significantly skewed, leading to misinformed decisions. So, always make sure you're working with the most accurate and up-to-date data. The second common mistake is overlooking the location-based method. This method considers the average emissions of the regional grid where the electricity consumption occurs. Ignoring this aspect can lead to an oversimplification of your emissions profile. Thirdly, many people tend to forget to include emissions from purchased steam, heating and cooling. These are integral parts of Scope 2 emissions and should not be overlooked. Another common mistake is neglecting to use the correct emission factors. Different countries, regions, and even different energy sources have varying emission factors. Using incorrect factors can drastically alter your results. Lastly, it's crucial not to underestimate the role of renewable energy certificates in your calculations. They play a significant part in reducing your overall emissions and should always be factored in. By avoiding these common mistakes, you can ensure a more accurate calculation of your scope to emissions. So keep these tips in mind and you'll be well on your way to mastering the art of calculating scope two emissions. That wraps up our guide on how to calculate scope two emissions. We've walked through the understanding of what scope two emissions are, how they impact our planet and our role in it. We've also shared a step-by-step -step method to calculate these emissions, a tool that can be a game changer in our journey towards sustainability. And let's not forget the common mistakes we discussed to ensure your calculations are as accurate as possible. Remember, these emissions, resulting from purchased electricity, heat and steam, are a significant part of our overall environmental footprint. By calculating and understanding them, we're taking a critical step towards a more sustainable future. So, keep learning, keep calculating and keep making a difference. Don't forget to subscribe to SustainerStep for more free sustainability tips and guides. And if you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up to help our channel grow. Until next time, keep taking steps towards sustainability.